Hello, it is Acacia Developer here, and welcome to episode 3 of the First Person Controller series. So today we're going to be fixing a problem that quite a few people seem to have run into, and that's the fact that the FPS controller jitters when it's walking down a slope or ramp. So the reason why the FPS player jitters or bounces as it traverses down a slope is because the character controller is moving faster than gravity can pull it down. So you'll find that when you're walking down a slope, you can walk forward, but then it takes a little bit of time for gravity to kick in and pull you down. And this is why you get this sort of bouncing effect. So in order to solve this problem, what we do is we detect when the player is moving and on a slope. And in that case, we apply an extra downward force. And as you can imagine, the more force we apply, the smaller and smaller these little bounces or jitters get. And at some point the downward force becomes strong enough that it completely stops the bouncing. So in order to detect whether or not the player is on a slope, we simply shoot a ray from the player body origin down to the ground and we record its normal. If the value of the normal isn't vector3.up or 010, then we know that we're on a slope. The length of the ray is going to be half the character controller height, and that's because we're shooting the ray from the origin, and we know that the origin is halfway down the character controller. But we also factor in an extra multiplier so we're able to customize the length of the ray. So within our player move class, to start with, we want two new fields. These are going to be a float data type. So I'm just going to copy this down and rename it. The first field is going to be called slope force. So this is going to be the multiplier for the amount of downward force that we apply to our player when it's on the slope. And then we want a second float field. And this is going to be called slope force ray length. And this is going to be a multiplier for the length of the ray that we shoot downward from our player body onto the ground to check whether or not we're on a slope. So a bit lower in our player move class, what we want to do is define a new function, which is going to return a boolean, and it's simply going to be called on slope. And this function simply tests whether or not the character controller is on a slope. So right off the bat, if we know that the character controller is jumping, then we know that it's not on a slope. So we can automatically return false if this is the case. Otherwise, if this isn't the case, we can specify some code down here to test whether or not we're on a slope. And in order to do this, I'm going to declare a raycast hit variable and this is called hit this variable will simply store the information on the surface that has been hit by our ray the ray is going to be created down here using our physics.raycast function call in an if statement so this if statement will return true if this ray hits something we need to specify the origin of the ray which is going to be the player body position so transform dot position um, the direction that we want to shoot the ray in, which is going to be downward, so we use vector3.down as our direction. The third parameter is where we want to store our hit information. Of course, it's going to be within our hit variable that we've declared just above, so we can simply type in out hit. It's an output parameter, so you have to have the out keyword. And the last argument specifies the length of the ray. The length of our ray is going to be char controller dot height divided by two. Of course, the character controller height divided by two is going to be the distance from the player body origin to the ground. And then of course, we multiply this by our slope ray length. And that way we can customize the length of the ray in the inspector if we need to. And then within this if statement, we now know that our hit variable is holding the data on the surface that the ray has just hit. So we can actually check the normal of the surface that has been hit. If it's not equal to vector3.up, then we automatically know that we're on a sloped surface. So we can return true. But by default, if none of this executes, then we just want to return false at the end of the function. And now if we scroll up to the player movement function under our function call to simple move, we want to define an if statement. And we're simply checking, so if the vertical input is not equal to zero, 
or if the horizontal input is not equal to zero and if on slope so basically this means if we're moving in any direction and if we're on the slope then in this case we want to apply our extra downward force so since this is a single line of code we can omit these braces if we really want to we apply the extra downward force simply by calling our move function on the character controller first of all i want to specify the direction of the force in this case it's going to be downward so vector 3 dot down then we want to multiply this by a quantity so it's going to be our character controller dot height divided by 2 remember what we said before that the height divided by 2 is simply the distance from the player body origin to the ground and then in order to customize the value further in the inspector we multiply that by our slope force field and then to make it frame rate independent we need to multiply it by time dot delta time like so so now you can save your player move script and we can switch over into the unity editor so within the unity editor if we select our player and navigate to the inspector you'll see that we have our new slope force and slope force ray length fields for the ray length i'm going to set this to 1.5 just to make it slightly longer than the distance between the player body origin and the ground to make sure it hits the ground at a reasonable height and then of course we have the slope force which is the multiplier for our downward force we can actually experiment with this so let's begin with one so when the slope force is one you can see that the player controller is still bouncing down the slope but let's change this to two instead so we've now just increased the force as you can see it's still bouncing slightly but it's bouncing a lot quicker so now I'm going to increase the slope force to a value of 3 let's see how that does I believe that's more or less done it maybe we could increase this from 3 to 5 just to be on the safe side but as you can see now when the player controller walks down the slope we're traversing it much more smoothly than we were initially it's also a good idea to test your character controller on a terrain and that way we can see how it traverses up hills and how it copes with steeper slopes as you can see we can walk up to the top of this mound and sort of jump off and as you can see we just fall to the ground and of course we can tweak our fields in the inspector so for example let's say i wanted to walk smoothly down this slope instead of walking off and sort of jumping down in order to do that we can actually increase our slope force let's just give it a value of 50 for now and i'm going to increase my ray length to something like 10. so now when i walk to the top you will see that the character controller stays fixed on this steep slope until we get to the bottom like so i highly recommend that you continue experimenting uh, putting different values in these fields until you've got something which works for you but anyway thank you very much for watching if you find my content useful then feel free to subscribe and like always i shall see you soon